G'day ladies and gents and welcome to IL-2 Stromovic, the Battle of Moscow. Now as I promised in the past, we're going to be going through the single player campaign for this one and give you a look at the other side of the content outside of the multiplayer. And this is, after the intro cinematic, the very start of the Battle of Moscow. Now, for the most part, IL-2 Battle of Moscow, much like Battle of Stalingrad's campaign missions, are randomly generated. They're generated based on a set of rules that govern the current status of the war at the time that you are playing. So, for example, in the early parts of Battle of Moscow, generally it will be a German higher level offensive, and then as it progresses through, the Russians will become more aggressive, because that campaign plays out, or at least the original campaign, plays out at the point when the Soviets were pushing the Germans out of Stalingrad. It's much the same here, however, there are storyline missions involved now. These small icons next to the selectable runways, all of these icons, I might add, are runways, but as you can see, most of them are locked. As you progress through the campaign, you will slowly unlock more runways that will make more missions available. At the moment, we have access to two runways for the Germans, two runways for the Russians, and both of these, you can play whichever side you wish. There is no campaign for one side or the other. You can select whatever you want to fly at whatever moment you want to fly it. However, there are these storyline missions, which are little target sites that are in the top right-hand corner of each of the runway indicators. Now, these missions, at least in the beta, were counters to one another. So, for example, the original mission from the beta had the German pilots attacking a runway. And we'll go into this in a moment. The Russian storyline mission that was available at the same time had a number of Russian pilots that were trying to escape the runway that the Germans were attacking. So from one, you were playing against yourself, depending on which storyline you intended to follow, or you could follow both. And the 109 that you were flying in the German mission will still show up in the Russian mission, however it's now AI controlled and you're trying to escape it. So we'll start off with Russian or German, Battle of Moscow, Germany's going to be on the tack. Let's start with the German mission. The Way East. After the Red Army suffered a crushing defeat near Solmensk and Kiev, the German command launched Operation Typhoon. On September 30th, 1941, Guderian's 2nd Panzer Army began the offensive against the left wing on the Bransk Front. My pronunciation here is going to be awful, and I apologise for it. And on October 2nd, the bulk of the Army Group Centre began to advance towards Moscow. Within the next four days, German divisions pushed through, capturing Orel, Bransk, and trapping the armies of the Bransk Front. On October 7th, the German tank divisions encircled the retreating armies in the Western Reserve Fronts near... Oh, I give up. Uh, most of the subsequent breakout attempts failed. By the 13th of October, the Soviet troops ceased organised resistance near... S. And by the 20th of October, the Branks picket was eliminated. Over 688,000 soldiers and officers were captured. Only about 85,000 men managed to escape the encirclement. Descending so low was a huge mistake. The earth exploded in a blaze of flames, and the retreating Russian infantry opened devastating fire on my aircraft. I pulled out of the dive and started a climb, fully expecting a bullet to hit the engine or the cooling system at that moment. I got lucky this time. From high up I saw the damaged radar that I had been chasing for the last few minutes. Scrape the ground, leave a long furrow behind, topple over and finally come to a halt. His flying days were over forever, I hope. I waited patiently for my wingman, who had been maintaining altitude all this time, to re-enter formation. I had a strong urge to go back and make at least one pass down the row of machine guns, but descending again would be too dangerous. Trying to break out of the encirclement, the Russians left all heavy weapons behind, but their bullets could still damage my 109, and I had no intention to subject my fighter to yet another strength test. Suddenly, my voice was interrupted by... Why do you have to go with the complicated names? Anxious voice. Oh, get stuffed. At three o'clock, below us. I snapped my head around to see and broke out a cold sweat. Five sharp-nosed aircraft were approaching rapidly, and there was no time to climb above the clouds to avoid the battle. How did we manage to miss them? I brought my engine to full power and braced myself for battle, but the enemy didn't seem to notice our two planes. The axe swept past, heading east. After a quick look at my fuel level and ammo indicators, I decided not to push my luck any further and headed home. We shall definitely meet again. 
Alright, so here comes the mission briefing. Date, October 11th, 1941. Time, 1020, weather cloudy, airfield, Yakhanov, call sign Elm. Air, uh, airfield call sign is Elm, your call sign is Raven 1. Flight mission, two pairs of BF-109 fighters provide air coverage for the rear guard convoys of the SS Panzer Division, Das Reich. Moving down the Gahatsi Tract to... Oh, Yep, 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 okay. So I'm providing escort to Panzer Divisions. Squadron composition, 4 BF-109 and F-2s, weapon standard, fuel 400 litres. Oh, it's... Hmm. Uh, Pre-flight instructions, after getting permission from command... <laughs> yep, okay, it's a standard combat air patrol. Four aircraft, I am flight lead, three on my wing, and we just have to follow through the preset navigations and we'll see what happens. This is different. This is different. In the beta, this was a a more personal mission, where this is much more closer to being a generic mission, which is a bit strange that they would change that. I thought the first mission from the beta was actually quite good. Um, maybe it shows up elsewhere. Anyways, what are we waiting for? So, once you've selected the mission, you go through to the mission briefing, which is where we are now. Now, the mission details page has pretty much all the same information that was available in the mission briefing for these sort of pre-scripted campaign missions. So there's nothing particularly new here, although we do have the specifications tab, which has all of the details for the BF-109 F2. Every single piece of information you could particularly want on the aircraft is available in this tab in detail. You can also see on the map in front, you can actually see the navigational course we'll be tasting, where the, the nav markers are that we'll be following. So we're heading straight north, and it looks like this entire flight is happening on the German side of the front. So we're not crossing the border. This means the airspace should be mostly controlled. There should only be a limited number of aircraft that are this far through. Still, that's all well and good. Let's go get in a plane. So we start this mission as a flight of four, ready for a formation takeoff. Now, the engines were already started. It automatically has you lined up down the runway, so all you've got to do is push the throttles forward and go. Generally, the AI won't take off along with you. They take off a few seconds after you, just in case you wander all over the runway. Which is probably a good thing because that's precisely what I did. Thankfully this base is less of a runway and more of an airfield. The takeoff area is as wide and as long as the entire tree line, so it doesn't really matter which angle you come in on or where you land. The only thing you gotta watch out for is the AAA guns that I only just cleared. So with our wheels off the ground, we're tracking the undercarriage now, we're gonna do one long spiral around the runway and then we're going to start heading towards waypoint one and I'm going to start following the map and the waypoints around through to our objective. I don't exactly know how this mission was going to go, I've never actually played this one before. I've only played the first mission from the beta, which is not this mission. Now, this smoke coming out of the town on the left hand side of the runway here. This is a little detail that I think goes very underappreciated in Battle of Stalingrad and Battle of Moscow. When you start the fighting, there tends to be very little of this. A little smoke out of towns here and there, the odd burning factory, so on and so forth. It gives you an indication there is definitely fighting going on, but, you know, th there's not a whole lot of it. The further and longer you play through the campaigns, though, the more of that comes up to the point where you run into stretches of, you know, entire towns that are just columns of smoke as they've been put to the torch. A big part of why this goes underappreciated is people that jump on and only play the multiplayer. The multiplayer doesn't have smoke columns like that, or they're very rare, because most of the time the developers, when you were in multiplayer, wanted you to see the smoke columns and know that meant that an enemy player had recently been in that area and had bombed a target within that zone. It lets you know that there is an attack taking place, or at least there has been an attack on the place that you were checking out sometime very recently. On that note, it's probably worth mentioning how these missions work. Now, the I'm unsure about how they're doing these campaign missions. I've been avoiding playing them until Battle of Moscow came out of beta, because I wanted to experience them once they were fully finished. The random mission generator, on the other hand, and how it works, is again something that I think is rather underappreciated within the Battle of Stalingrad and the Battle of Moscow. Again, it's something that people who play exclusively multiplayer would never really see unless they were going in to grind out unlocks and skins, and even then they may not notice it or they may find it annoying, but trying to make a realistic campaign, I actually quite like how they've done it. 
So, what the hell am I on about? Well, there is no, short of these little storyline missions, there is no sustained storyline that you're going to be playing non-stop through the campaign, and the developers copped a lot of flack for that. However, they didn't want this to be the story of an individual pilot, which you know I can respect, that's their choice as a developer, as long as the gameplay itself is good. The way the random mission generator works, however, is it, it will set you out a, 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 a course, a mission objective, based on a set of criteria. Now, you actually supply the criteria to the mission, so you select the aircraft that you want to fly for the nation that you want to fly for, you also select the type of mission you want to participate in. That's all up to you to select, so you have control of that. From that point, the game will generate a random mission based on the information that you have given it for what you would like to do. And it will randomise the time, the mission paths, and everything, including what you'll face in the mission, and this is where things get really cool. Now we're just going to skip a little bit further into the patrol here so we can get a little bit closer to the action. Now, back to the mission generator. It will create a mission objective based on your selection criteria, but from there it will populate the world on what it thinks should be happening at that period during the Battle of Moscow or the Battle of Stalingrad, depending on what campaign you're actually playing. So it's entirely possible for you to go flying out on a randomly generated mission and you to be engaged by a large hostile force, or for you to come across an engagement between members of your nation and the opposing nations. Fighters already engaged in a massive dogfight completely on their own. It's possible that you'll run across enemy attackers and enemy bombers, a whole number of various things that you could encounter, formations that you could encounter in the skies that are completely unrelated to your mission. Likewise, you could get a patrol mission where your job is to fly around in a fighter and come across any hostile aircraft, engage them and destroy them. Well, much like real life, it is possible that it will randomly generate you a mission where you will not encounter anybody if you stick to the mission flight path. And even if you don't stick to the mission flight path, you may not encounter anyone anyway. You set the mission parameters. Basically, you set your own mission briefing on what you're going to do, but you don't know what's going to happen once you have set those parameters which makes the replayability of these missions virtually unlimited. So at this point I've detected my first targets in the mission, or to be more accurate about it, my wingmen did. You can sort of use your AI in these missions as a sort of directional radar. You set them to automatically engage any hostiles that get within their range, and when they suddenly break off and head in a direction, just turn in with them and follow, and they will take you to whatever they happen to find. Of course, you have no control over what it is that they find. It could be a single aircraft that they've pulled you out of position for. In this case, not so much. There's a swarm of hostile fighters here. I have no idea how many they are. I've only gotten a very, very brief glimpse of them all as they're nicking in and out of the clouds. I actually managed to lose them for a few seconds after my initial engagement. However, I did manage to keep eyes on one of my wingmen. and Thankfully, he led me straight through to the main engagement. And this was where I first identified the aircraft. I'm fighting against at least four, possibly five MiG-3s. Now I have no fear of entering a flat turn with a MiG-3. The 109F2 is more than capable of outturning one. The trick is just managing to balance them in the turn. The 109F2 will turn harder, but the more aggressively you pull on the stick and the more airspeed you lose, the more unstable it becomes, and the harder it is to try and keep it stable in the turn and get guns back on target. The MiG-3 on the other hand doesn't turn quite as well, but has a tendency to retain more stability in the same turn.
Now I'm trying not to be wasteful with my shots here, I don't know how many aircraft are around me and I don't know how many of them my wingmen are going to actually take out. So I want to be very, very, very conservative with how often I pull the trigger. And the first shots finally land home. We've got a nice black plume of smoke coming out of the back of the aircraft and it looks like that's probably the oil system pop considering it's coming off the left hand side wing route. Second shot connects and the aircraft immediately pulls straight and we get the whitey green colour that usually indicates some kind of fuel leak. I continue tracking the aircraft for a few seconds, intending to line up for my next shot until I see the canopy come flying off the aircraft. At that point I just open up the throttles and continue flying through. There's no point in shooting it anymore, the pilot's bailing. So continuing the left hand bank I fall into the tail of what appears to be the second MiG-3. Most of the fighters in the area seem to have gone and there is a couple of smoke pillars you'll spot on the ground so I'm assuming my wingmen have been doing their work well. This one seems less interested in trying to turn fight with me and more interested in opening up the throttles and trying to run itself. Pulls immediately for altitude flying in a straight line so I open up the throttles and move to follow. So at this moment, having noticed a number of my 109 flight actually falling into my position, I'm far more confident with opening up with the guns. At this point, I am on the home stretch of the patrol. It's unlikely I'm going to be encountering anybody else. And if the 109s in my flight are pulling in to engage this MiG-3, it means there are no other aircraft available. Now, if you pay close attention to the ammunition counter in the middle, to the left-hand side of the gun reticle, you'll see that it's just about to run out of ammo. Now, this is counting my cannon ammunition. And now it's full again. So, why did it do that? To be perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure. The only aircraft I encounter this on is the BF-109 F2, which I am flying. Or at least it's the only 109 that I've noticed it on. I don't know whether or not it's meant to do that or whether or not it's a bug, but basically the center ammunition counter for the cannon is only counting around about half the ammunition load. So you have the first 50% of your ammunition, once you have consumed that the counter resets to the top and you get a second bar to chew through. As I said I don't know if it's something historical about the aircraft or whether or not it's just a bug, it's just what happens. Now at this point I've managed to close the gap on the MiG-3 so much that the AI is now trying to engage me in a turning battle, it's realised it can't run. So now I've just got to get the lead and finish the job. And at this point I realise the MiG-3 isn't just turning to try and evade, it's actively trying to engage the other 109s that are surrounding it.
My first shells strike home and a white plume of smoke erupts from the aircraft as a result. Another burst of ammo away and you do hear the telltale thud that indicates the shells did in fact land home, however at this time it doesn't look like it's done much in the way of additional damage. That being said, the MiG is starting to rock around rather seriously in this turn. We're maintaining about 300km an hour in this bank at the moment, although the MiG seems to be very uncomfortable with sustaining this turn with the damage it has taken. The next shot struck the aircraft and I see something come off. I'm not entirely sure if it was the rudder or the elevator. But in either case, that is the end of this fight. In total, two MiG-3s with five shot down in total for this mission. All of my flight returned to base. I would show the return to base and the landing, but it was pretty uneventful and at this point we're starting to get past 22 minutes. Overall, I'm rather disappointed in this first campaign mission. The one that I got to play in the beta was better, so it'll be interesting to see how the Russian campaign is going to start, or if that German mission that I got to play is going to show up somewhere else in the campaign at a later time. Anyways, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please let me know by hitting that like button. And alternatively, if you didn't, make sure you hit the dislike button as well. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Subscribe if you haven't already and you would like to see more on the channel. And until next time, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.